And tonight we have a health alert about an agonizing life or death decision that could happen to any family. A teenager in Florida was in such tortuous pain, she begged her mother to let her die. Melissa McCready has her story. It's a story of survival you have to see to believe. At age 16, Jessica was the picture of a happy, healthy teenager. But all of that changed with a tiny tick bite on the back of her knee. Once it invaded my nervous system, I lost use of both of my legs. A light, a breeze, a whisper caused excruciating pain. Sunglasses and headphones did little to help. I couldn't get out of the bed. I couldn't eat. I couldn't move. Every single thing in my life was pain. Any type of lights or sounds triggered a seizure. Jessica was diagnosed with a rare, uncurable neurologic condition considered the most painful known to medicine. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy, or RSD, causes nerves to malfunction, constantly sending pain signals to the brain. Her arms and abdomen were covered with painful sores. You feel like you are literally doused in gasoline, lit on fire, and being burned continuously. Nothing alleviates it. Not even a mother's touch. Child always comes to the mom first. You know, mommy can always make it better. You know, mommy always can fix the boo-boo. But with this illness, there is really nothing that you can do. You can't even touch them. Desperate for answers, the family took Jessica to more than 100 doctors. Some suggested amputating her arms. Others said it was time to let her die. Jessica would eventually make the same request of her mother. Then I just asked her, just please, just shut it. Just shut everything. I can't do it another second. Doctors suggested Jessica's last hope for survival was to become part of a research study in Monterey, Mexico. There, Dr. Fernando Cantu would attempt a drastic procedure not approved in the U.S. Jessica would be put into a coma using an anesthetic and a hallucinogenic drug called ketamine. Like rebooting a computer, the coma would aim to restart the brain, but there was no guarantee. Really, we were told she would probably die there in Mexico. Jessica spent seven days in an induced coma, nearly three times as long as allowed in the U.S. I woke up and my lesions had vanished. But serious complications followed. I didn't know who I was. I had complete amnesia. I didn't recognize my mother. It was just like my whole life had been wiped out from this coma. The nightmare didn't stop there. Jessica stayed in Mexico for years. To save her life, Dr. Cantu eventually pumped more ketamine mean into Jessica, putting her into another coma, her third in two years. Jessica's mom recorded the first Hi, moments Jess. when Jessica came to. I love you, Jessica. I love you too. This time it worked. No, she woke up healed. Now 24 years old, she uses a wheelchair as she transitions from years of being bedridden far from home. It was psychological warfare. I feel like for six years, my mom and I were prisoners of war. She has a message for others imprisoned by the terrifying condition. Don't give up. Uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I promise you that. Jessica's pushing for ketamine coma procedure to be approved in the U.S. On your side, Melissa McCready, today's DMJ4.